We lasted one day. I'm back in the pickup. Britt got home yesterday after work and I, I went to her and I said, I felt so weird driving the terrain. She looks at me, she's like, I felt so weird driving the pickup and it's cold. <laughs> this truck takes a lot longer to heat up than her vehicle. And she's got such a short commute that by the time she gets to work, it's not even warmed up. Even if you like warm it up first, like obviously you start up the engine, warm up the fluids a bit before you move. And she doesn't have, like she didn't have heated seats in here. There's heated seats in there. And I was just sitting in the lap of luxury. I, I was just thinking to myself, I'm not worthy of all this. Like satellite radio in the terrain, heated seats. Pioneer, I think it's the Pioneer is it a Bose sound systems. Just, it's amazing. It's the vehicle that she chose. She chose it. We went out and we bought a vehicle for her. And I got this vehicle when Britt and I first started dating. And I had bought this truck for me. It was what I needed. I wanted a bit of a fancier Z71, or maybe even a high country, but nah, I got a, I got a Silverado, Chevy Silverado work truck, 1500, and it's all I need, I like it. It's simple, but I like it. So we switched back vehicles. I know we'd save money the other way, but you know what? Sometimes you just gotta take the hit to be comfortable. And I'm comfortable in this truck, and she's comfortable in the terrain. So sometimes you just gotta take the hit, you know? so that you can be comfortable and happy. You can't put a price on just happiness. I'm happiest driving my pickup. She's happiest driving her terrain. Costs a little bit more money, but it is what it is, okay? We're willing to take that sacrifice for our happiness, at least right now. <laughs> we'll see, we're in a good place right now where that's okay, we can do that. And uh, we got all of our savings set up for our IVF. So we're actually getting through. I think I've told you this already. We're going through with it uh, two months earlier than we expected. We're very happy about that. We'll have everything set and ready to go end of January. We're starting our first. Uh, we got to go through a few uh, courses and stuff. And, you know, they got to let us know everything that's going on, especially for Brit, because she's got to, you know, the brunt of it is all on her. So they've got to make sure that she knows everything that's going to happen, all of the procedures, all the stuff that has to happen to her and her body uh, in order for this to work. And she's got to be aware of it and consent to it. And like I said, my part's kind of enjoyable. I don't, I don't think they even ask for my consent. All I got to do is uh, drop the boys off when the eggs are ready. And... Uh, I don't know. I would kind of like to be asked if I consent, but maybe I do have to sign a paper. <laughs> I'm sure I do. I'm sure we both have to sign a paper saying that, hey, we give them permission to use my specimen and her specimen and fertilize them together to create a life. Isn't that amazing what they can do nowadays? Creating a life, and then they let it grow into about 100, 150 cells, and then they implant it into her uterus, where hopefully it takes, and where those cells will keep duplicating and duplicating and duplicating and form a human baby. Isn't life amazing? I, I can't wait for this whole thing to, to take shape and for uh, this whole journey we're about to take in. I, I'm probably gonna get a little bit emotional. <laughs> Not now, but once it actually gets going, because we worked really hard and uh, we, we surpassed our goals. We wanted to be ready by uh, end of tax season. We thought we might use some of our tax return if we have a tax return coming this year and, and that, but it turns out we can use that for other debts and pay other debts with that. And we're all set, we did it on our own and uh, we're gonna do it. So January, we have a few uh, appointments to go in for those consent appointments and uh, acknowledgement appointments. I don't know what they are, we'll find out. And then I believe the, the actual procedure is probably going to take place in February. That's what we're hoping for. February. 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 I can't English. February. February. Try to say that fast. February. February. I used to always call it February. It's not. It's February. Did you know that February was supposed to be the last day of the month? I'm the last. 
February was supposed to be the last month of the year. December was supposed to be the 10th month of the year. It would have made way more sense, right, to have the shortest month right at the end, and then every four years you add a, a day on to the end of the year. But for some reason, I think it was the Romans that went around and messed with everything. They, they changed it. Topic for another vlog, topic for another vlog. All right, let's go hook up. I'm, uh, if you can see through the dirty window there, I've got a roll tight flat behind me. Gotta go hook her up. First, let's make sure it's empty. Just like yesterday, I don't want to bring a loaded trailer up there and waste everybody's time. Ouch. Okay, uh, just a little bit of cleanup to do yet, but that's okay, I'll do that before we leave. I can tell at the back there already that the, the back flap isn't correctly put in. I'll show you on the back when we get back there. I'll fix it. Oh, I can still smell the skunk. Oh man, that was on Friday already. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, it's four days. I wonder how long that skunk smell is gonna last. Come on now, come on. Let's hook up the air. Hook up the lights. Here we go. Okay. Just gonna go charge the trailer with air this time. I don't like to do things twice. I don't have to. Oh, hear that already? Air leak. Okay. That's why we do this. I'll fix it. Oh yeah, that's why. And out of there. There you go. This one as well. All right, we'll try this again. Put a little spin on there. Problem solved. All right. Let's roll these up first. Don't want to forget that. Fix that, fix that. Tires full of air. Wunderbar. Okay, now back here. Signals are working. I forgot to check the brake lights off to do that in a second. Okay, back here you can tell. You see this whole side? It's not supposed to do that. I don't know what this thing's doing here, but uh, it shouldn't be there either. What's going on, man? Okay, that is supposed to, uh, see it's all frozen in place now because it was, it's been out of place for so long. It's actually out of place now. Okay, I gotta undo this side too. Oh boy. See what I got? Why is this, this bar slid out this way a little bit? Okay. Let's do this side first. See, this little thing here has got to be inside this rib here. I had a comment on my video that I released yesterday that uh, asked me about my open window. I very often have my window open even on the coldest days. And I do that for airflow in my cab. I like to have fresh air moving in the cab all the time. The heat is going as well, so it may seem a little funny. I got the heat going and a window open, but I find that's the perfect mixture of fresh air and warm air. It's just something I've always done. My dad's always done it too. In his truck, he's always driven the old school trucks as well, and in his Freightliner, he's got that little window right over here, right, that you can just push open a crack. He usually had that open all the time, just to get fresh air in the cab. And no, it doesn't make you cold. Nah. At this time of year, like I was saying yesterday, I mean, my body is now pretty much climatized to the colder weather, and uh, I don't even notice it anymore. Today's a pretty good day. It's minus 20 out today. And I'm, I'm feeling great. I mean, I didn't even need my jacket this morning. I just had my sweater. I feel great. I have my toque on to keep my ears warm, obviously, and my head. And gloves to keep my hands warm and stuff. But our bodies get used to it. Our bodies are amazing machines. Like, 
These things are amazing. I don't think we, we ever stopped to really fully appreciate it. It's like a completely 100% biodegradable living machine. Winchester, Woodbridge, Virginia, Franklin, Virginia, and Harrisonburg, Virginia. That's right around the area, I think, where my buddy Moses and Colleen live. I'm gonna have to give them a call, say we got some stuff headed your way. Look out! It's coming from the cold Arctic North. And I'm gonna send all my cold air with it. <laughs> Get ready for snow, Moses and Colleen. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I'm not that mean of a guy. But if you don't mind, I won't send my cold weather down to Virginia. Uh, but if you don't mind, would you please send your warm Virginia air back? Just load it right on up in the trailers, close it up in there, send it back to Manitoba. I really appreciate it oh, let's quickly show you let's quickly take a look anyways just double check everything uh, make sure everything in here is doing swell and there you go one two three four going to Virginia I'm expecting a load of warm summer air to be delivered back on the reload counting on you virginia don't let me down okay Whew. what are those doing on the floor they should actually be up here warming up so they're nice and toasty warm for when i need them next oh Whew. feels good feels good loaded up tied down double check triple check Swing into the convenience store here for a little bathroom break. Ah, we're gonna pull ourselves back out onto the highway and pull this thing back. So how about it everybody? The daylight hours are getting longer again. How's that make you feel? Makes me feel really good. We're on our way to summer. It's officially winter time now though. And that means we're in the final season before spring. Very exciting. Oh, I'm gonna be driving right into that sun too. I can't wait till the sun starts rising in the sky more again so that when I drive south, it's not right in my eyes. That's, that's as high as it gets. That is noonday. turning.
<laughs> All right. Oh. All parked and ready to go. Let's just unplug this right away. I just started my pickup here. I don't like to idle the truck with my block heater plugged in. It's not really good for it. Plug this one into here. Get that thing going. So I can start that in the morning. All right. And pull my pickup keys off this big janitor ring that I got here. There you go. The heat cranked, good. Huh. Don't have heated seats, but it's okay. my stuff and then we'll head back to the house we'll do it all over again tomorrow got anything to say chef you have been very clingy since i got home it's almost like you think something's supposed to happen sooner than later you know that something happens at 7 30 right that's when we fill up your bowl I can't say the word or he'll freak out. He's really hoping that that time in the evening is right now. <laughs> no, Chevy, that's that's for my dinner. I'm just getting the uh, stove ready. Britt worked uh, works 5.30 to 8.30, I think, today. So I got home at about, I think, like 5.40, 5.45. So just missed her. But uh, she called me up. Asked me about my day, and I told her, have a good day. It's tough working opposite shifts sometimes, but you got to work, work, work. That's what life's all about. All right? We all got to contribute as much as we can. And the way it's supposed to work is the more effort you put in, the more you get back out of it. That's how I think it's supposed to work anyway. I got the uh, oven set here at 350 degrees. All of our, uh, it's funny, because in Canada we do Celsius, right? But all of our uh, stoves are in Fahrenheit for some reason. I guess because they all get made in the U.S. or they all come through the U.S. And they don't want to spend the money to change it to Celsius. Or maybe I can change it. Maybe there's an option for that. But that's just standard. Cooking temperatures are in Fahrenheit in Canada. It's weird, right? And uh, most people also use the temperature in their house as Fahrenheit. We use it in Celsius, so we usually have it at about 20 to 21 degrees Celsius in here, and then we drop it down to 18 for night because we like it to be cold. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit because I've never had a thermostat in Fahrenheit before, but most Canadians will tell you that, yeah, their thermostat in their house is in Fahrenheit, but the temperature outside we know in Celsius. What a strange group of people. <laughs> That's why we do all the systems. We don't just learn one system, we learn all the systems in school. That's why when we go to the US, it's very little to adjust to. I'm not sure if they get taught about like other measurements and other systems in the US. From what I've heard, like I got a lot of friends in the US and I love going to the US, great country, it's beautiful, beautiful. But it doesn't seem like in their schools they get taught a lot about the world outside their borders. I don't know, maybe you guys can fill me in on that. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, maybe they do. Maybe you just don't pay attention in that part of class, eh? <laughs> we had to learn all about U.S. history and U.S. presidents and the U.S. Constitution and U.S. wars around the world in the past. And we also had to learn about the Canadian Constitution and the Canadian government system and the Canadian history and the Canadian wars. We had to learn all about that. And we had to learn about the British as well, the British Empire and the British Commonwealth, because we're still a Commonwealth member, so we had to learn all about Australia, New Zealand. Uh, there was South Africa in there for a while. That I think that phased out pretty much right when I went into school, because they're independent now. Uh, it's mostly Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and the UK is what we focused on in schools, it seemed like. And the US, because they're right next door. I don't know, I'm getting off on a tangent. Why do I do these things? I'm tired. Uh, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was making supper. The dog has got to wait another hour. Ah! Ho! Red just attacked me. 
you don't know who you're dealing with. Show you. I put you in there gently. Don't tell my wife. I threw you in there, okay? This is what we're making today for supper. Chicken pot pie. <laughs> it takes an hour to cook this. Why? Why? 60 to 70 minutes at 350 Fahrenheit or 180 Celsius. Place on middle oven rack and bake for 60 to 70 minutes. I don't even know if I can stay awake that long, but we're going to try. I guess I better, eh? I better stay awake that long. Put this in the oven. There she is. I guess I should put away all those dishes too. And do that while this is cooking. Now, I said just place on middle rack. I don't have to put it on a pan or anything. I guess it's just good right on that there. Okay. That's what it said, right? You read it too. Preheat oven, remove frozen pie from packaging, and remove plastic film. Done. Place on middle oven rack and bake. It just says place it in there. I'm no rocket scientist, but I don't think I need a pan. I'm just going to throw it right in there. All right. Okay, 60 to 70 minutes. We'll check on you in an hour, little buddy. Put a little, uh, well, 65 minutes, 60 to 70. Oh. Oh. Oh, there we go. One hour and five minutes. Set. Okay. Why did it beep at me then? Say error. I don't know what's going on. Too tired for that. Over there. Okay. Got some stuff to do yet. I'm gonna work on some videos and probably watch some TV. Got the house. I think it turned out pretty good if you ask me. I'm gonna turn this off before I forget so I don't burn the place down. Just call me Chef Josh. Chef for Josh. Is that a thing? It's actually really good. Really good and delicious, so it turned out good. Uh, Britt should be off working about a half hour. I'm gonna wrap this up right now because I'm gonna go lay in bed. I'm tired. Eight o'clock's my bedtime, so it's 10 to eight right now. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Just sort of hanging around the area here today. Not sure what tomorrow is gonna bring, but I'll see you then. Take care. See you tomorrow.